Welcome to another Skill Cookbook course. In this video, I'm going to take a look at creating sprite sheets for a 2D game in Swift. I'm going to use a program called Texture Packer, which you can see in the accompanying blog post, the screenshots for it and the exact settings that I use, in order to create sprite sheets for my game. In Forever Maze, as I explained in a previous video, we have a 2.5D or isomorphic game design. This means that our tiles are shaped like diamonds, essentially. And we have this cardinal coordinate system where this direction is north. So that being the case that we have four different directions here, you'd first think that we would need every piece of art to actually face four different ways or have four different versions of every piece of art. But that's not true. We can actually have the amount of art we want. We can only deliver the north and south assets. If you think about it, the east and west artwork are actually simple X transformations of the north and south artwork. In other words, if we mirror along the X axis, the south facing artwork, we get the east facing artwork. Likewise, if we mirror along the x-axis the north-facing artwork, we get the west-facing artwork. So you can save your artist and your pocketbook a little bit of time and money here by only using half of the assets. This is also great for optimization since you're not going to be using as much memory or disk space to deliver your assets, and just overall better for the game. So now we've kind of got this idea of our four cardinal directions. The first thing I did was set up a direction.swift class that handles uh, just kind of making the, the uh, four directions into an enum that is easy to work with and human readable and has some convenience methods in it. For example, it can turn a degree or degrees rather into a direction. So if you look at, uh, if you look at this as being theta right there, that angle can be converted into north, south, east, or west, which is really helpful later on when we talk about creating control structures and d-pad input and other important things like that for your game. But for the moment, let's uh, return to the actual sprite sheets themselves. The other concept that we need, other than directionality, is the animation group. For example, we have idle and walking in Forever Maze. And these are the two different uh, things that a character can be doing at any given point in time. Of course, if your game had, say, spell casting or attack animations, you would have other animation groups. But for, for Forever Maze, it's actually quite simple. The character is either just standing there, idle, or he or she's walking. So the direction and the action are enough to essentially tell us what we need from the sprite sheet. So the code that I've pasted on the blog actually follows um, just a simple naming pattern that takes first the asset, then the action, In the direction plus the frame number. So you end up getting some file name out of this that the game expects for each asset. For example, hero underscore walking underscore n for north underscore one would be the first frame for the hero walking in the north direction. So as long as you set up all of your assets naming conventions correctly and pack them into Texture Packer, which by the way is a great program that I've used for a couple different games now, and does a very good job of compressing and fitting in all the assets you can into a single sprite sheet. And just as an aside, a sprite sheet, since we didn't talk about this in the beginning, is a much more efficient way to load up all of your different assets instead of having dozens or hundreds of individual files, a sprite sheet is simply more efficient for the game engine, for space usage, and just general performance in your game. 
So once you've got this naming convention set up, the code that I've pasted actually allows you to very easily pull out cached assets from the sprite sheet. There's some tricks I use later in the article, like caching the assets or deferring the drawing of the assets with promises. You can check out all of that in the source code, but I think it's a pretty simple, easy way to deal with uh, character animation and just general object artwork in Swift and using SpriteKit. I hope you found this useful. If there was anything unclear, please let me know in the comments or shoot me an email. I'd be happy to explain in more detail.